Good morning. It is Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. A little bit wet out there. Surly weekend for sure, weather-wise, right? With the uh, tornado down in uh, Scotts Valley. Um, that was pretty interesting. And uh, cars turned over, right? That's something you don't see every day uh, from an F1 tornado. There have been tornadoes before. We get like, like 10 or 11 a year in the state of California. Most of them reside in the area or develop in the area I grew up in, which is from about Marysville north to Red Bluff. It was in that zone. And my dad used to tell me about seeing funnel clouds all the time. And that's that area because it's sort of a lens. If you picture California and you picture Northern California, picture the coastal hills and they round up by day, uh, Redding and then they kind of come back down towards um, Lassen a little further. And so it's kind of a, a lens, it's a lens. And so when the storms come in from the south, they get pushed up into the valley. The valley's flat. A lot of that energy gets kind of harnessed in between those two mountain ranges, the coastal range and the Cascade range, and partially the Sierra Nevada. And you have the ability for some tornadic, for some rotation. Anyway, this deal in the, in the hills, you don't see that every day, right? That's hard to do. I kind of got the vibe that there was something over in Davenport earlier, like kind of like a water spout or some kind of a rotation. Davenport's on the coast kind of adjacent this is just anecdotal but i think what might have happened is that funnel that water spout which form easily water spouts form super easy because of their over the water there's less friction right and so they, they're able to get rotation going it moves up into the hills it sort of retracts up into the cloud into the wall cloud goes over the hill and as soon as it's got a chance it sees oh scott's valley where the tornado can can start spinning and it dropped in because it only lasted a few seconds in Scotts Valley or not, not very long it was a short time on the ground totally me just making up science right there but I think that's po a real possibility truthfully um, so we'll see they'll find out more in the coming days uh, there was that tornado in Sunnyvale back in 1998 I remember that and I actually wrongly said well this was better video but the tornado in Sunnyvale had that, this picture I put up for you. It's like, whoa, that's some stuff, right? And then there was one, I remember one in Sebastopol. I was up there for that. And Sebastopol was another one. Sebastopol was right along the coast, right? Bodega Bay kind of area. And the there could have been a water spout. And it came up into the hills, into the great in Sebastopol area, kind of retracted, and then dropped down as soon as it had a chance. Once it got to the top of the ridgeline, because I actually visited, I was there that day, because I was working at channel 50 um and it might have dropped had an opportunity to drop down i again i'm not a, a tornado tornado guy uh, that's a specific study but uh, i suspect there's something to that right these coastal things it can form on the because you get rotation pretty easily over the water you just do that's why when you ever see dust devils you ever seen dust devils driving through arizona they you don't see them much in the hills right because they can't get a good clean flow into the base of the weather uh, into the base of the uplift in the case of a, a dust devil anyway i'm going to look more into that okay so we're getting a little bit of rain out there now let's take a look real quickly at the radar and we'll see that most of the rain is moving through and you can see Concord getting some now this is in terms of heavy rain it's kind of moderate most of the rainfall accumulations have been really really pretty light for the most part we can check out some of the numbers right now these are the um, this is cnfrc california uh, nevada river forecast center and they have everything it's awesome you know especially if you live in the russian river area get to get used to just google search cnfrc i think it's on my links page but um it, it does rainfall it does river levels it does forecast river levels it's awesome so here are some of the numbers, and let's see, we'll start up in Petaluma, uh, over an inch of rain, Roner Park, Santa Rosa, right? Uh, inch of rain, not bad, not bad for a weak little storm. And then as you work your way further south, because this thing was centered, centric towards the north, uh, San Jose, oh, actually, where am I now? Bay, Big Rock, Big Rock uh, down by Novato, half inch of rain, San Anselmo, half inch of rain. Those are good rainfall accumulations. And again, for fire danger, this is money, right? It kind of keeps us out of that zone for a while. Mill Valley, just a half inch of rain, which that is not a lot of rain for Mill Valley. Now watch what happens. I'm going to open it up. And then if we come down to San Francisco, look at the difference. Uh, half inch of rain, almost an inch in Mill Valley to 1500s in San Francisco to the East Bay Hills, 0 0.10, uh, 0.10. And then it kind of gets to San, San Jose and it's like, whoa, what rain, right? Even the Santa Cruz Mountains, 
just 0 0.01. So this is all centered to the north, pretty much. We can look at that, um, the visual on this, and this is more, I think, where am I right now? This is somewhere, this is North Bay. This, I think, oh, this is up above Sausalito. But this is the last three hours or so. And you can kind of go, okay, yeah, it's not real windy, but a little bridge, boom, there comes the rain. That's where you got your half inch right there in that, that little burst. And then you'll see it kind of, I think it clears out here a little bit. It does not, but you get the idea. That's the North Bay. And then this is Santa Clara, essentially in the same time period. And you can see the difference, right? So, yeah, there's a lot big difference. Now, you'll see, I think they do get a few raindrops down here eventually, but I mean on this cam. In the mountains, it's snowing. This is Castle Peak. Can't get enough of these Tahoe cams. Now they're, you know, they're probably going to get, well, I forgot, maybe six inches, eight inches of snow. So the winter weather advisory there. The travel up there has been sketchy. A little hot tip for you. I'm, I'm a, I grew up skiing. I'm not uh, skiing that much. Well, I do. I still ski a bit, I guess. But um, the next couple of days, starting tonight, take off. If you can get out of here and run up there. Everything's going to be awesome, ski-wise. The, the, the um, conditions are going to be great. The, I'm, the snow's awesome, but I mean the weather conditions. So you're going to have a good run because after this, we get into a run of weather that is, especially right around Christmas, looks kind of back into this wet pattern we just came out of. So here's Ocean Beach. Look how much smaller it is. Awesome. But we saw the big tides. Still pretty dangerous. Not a bad day to crab fish. I'm not going to bust nut on the crab fishermen right now because you can get out there. It's a good high tide and it's pretty safe. That wave, I mean, these are, you know, that's, I'd call that four foot. It looks bigger than that, but I don't think it is. I think it's pretty small. But that's, it's kind of still on the high tide. Steamer Lane, as we talked about yesterday, nobody out. Again, it's a little south. Santa Cruz Mountains not getting as much activity as we have uh, in terms of rainfall. And then let me, I think I have to move this up just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so this is the CFS, GFS, Global Forecast Model. Um, there's a lot of them. Pretty soon, by the way, AI is going to take these models. Because what I do, all I do, all any of us do, just say, so, you know, here comes the great mystery to be, to be pushed aside. When, before you guys had the internet, the meteorologists, we were the only guys really who had access to this stuff. I mean, you could find it, but you had to search. So we, we had all this data that we would, we look at the, um, back then it was the LFM, um, lifted grid model, lift, lifted fine mesh model. There was a GF, there wasn't a GFS back then. I can't remember what the other ones were, NGM. But these models, like two or three. And we'd look at them and we'd go, I think, I think, I think. And then we'd decide what's going to happen for you, right? Which is, it's, we had access to it. Um, and that was sort of the, the game in town. Well, now with AI and the internet, that's why I'm doing this. You really, I mean, you do need me just because what would we do in the mornings, right? I mean, I, in, in this case, it's, you'll probably get this in the afternoon. But what would we do, right? We drink our coffee, we watch some weather, we move on. But now with, with AI and pretty soon, they're going to they're gonna take five, six, seven, eight models. AI is, they, it. And it's going to merge them. And it's going to look at climatology. It's going to look at sun angle. It's going to look at length of day. It's going to look at terrain. It's going to look at everything. And it's going to, within moments, we'll spit out a forecast I wouldn't say much better than we can do, but it will be, for me, I'll look at a bunch of, I'll look at some AI content product. Then I'll go, oh, well, I've lived here. This is the next part of weather forecasting. And you know this, because I know, and I know you guys. Um, I've lived here a long time. I've seen this before, pattern recognition. That's where animals, that's what we do. We recognize patterns. Um, and then you, you recognize the patterns, if you're, especially if you're a farmer or a fisher. And so that's what we do. So with this AI, forecasting, which will all happen in the next year or so, already is, um, we'll then be able to take that machine-generated output and go, oh, yeah, but I've lived in San Rosa a long time, and here's what I know. The last time we saw this signature, pattern recognition, we had flooding up on Guerneville and this and that. And you can bend the model to your will a little bit because we'll get into models sometime. We already have kind of. But there's so little data that goes into these models. There's a lot of stuff that goes into them, but compared to what could. In other words, the data points are so few and far between to feed the models the data that um, when that changes, which it will um, someday, that's when the models become gods. 
but they're not yet. And they, I, don't, I don't see that happening for a while. So anyway, that's a, that's a little model talk. And again, I am not an expert on computer models. I, I learned how to do this stuff back in, we used to build models ourselves. Like we, mathematically, we'd go through and build, I think we built the Omega model. No, we use the, that's the Omega equation. Well, it's, I can't remember which model. Oh, and then we built the, I think we built the NGM. Anyway, we took, you know, cal, you know, we just took numbers and weather data and mountain much. And then, um, I think we used integrals. And I can't remember all this stuff we did. I almost said yes. Okay, so here is, right now, there's us. There's some scattered showers right now. And then, bam, see ya, gone, right? So that's this afternoon. So afternoon commute's fine. Mountain travel will get better, and you skiers will be stoked. And then here we go. That's a run. We're having a run right now, buddy. That's nothing going on. Nothing. I mean, nice. The only thing I think we'll see is valley fog, because I'm not seeing a lot of wind. And then um, here comes, this is kind of right here. This is getting close to Christmas. It's 23rd, 24th, something like that. And then a little break. And then here's more. And so that holiday period, let's see where that is. That is... December 24th, sorry, so I was a little behind. So the 20, 22nd through the 24th, and then New Year's Eve, kind of there. So we do have, a, it's gonna be It's gonna be winter. It's gonna act like winter, and that's kind of awesome. We need that. Um, that's your forecast for today. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, next couple of days will be kind of nice and quiet for us weather-wise around here, so we'll find some esoteric stuff to talk about. Thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks for telling a friend. Um, I appreciate I just all the new subscribers. You guys are awesome. Um, let me know what you need, and we'll we'll get it done. I'll see you back here.